coming up on The Amazing Art Show, Chambers of the Heart. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today we are working on Chambers of the Heart. And we've got some really cool stuff we're working with today. Nothing too crazy. Um, you're going to need a large piece of um, white paper. White will, would be the best. You want it to be fairly thick, so not super flimsy. Um, you could use cardboard. You could get mom and dad to cut up a box for you. Anything that has some good weight to it. You are going to need some paint. Acrylic paint would be the best. We use that a lot on the show. So something like that. You want kind of a bright color. Um, obviously, you'll need a brush to apply that with. You're going to need um, some type of markers, and these are my favorite markers in the whole wide world, but they don't make them anymore, so they're like gold to me. But um, some kind of a marker. If you could get something that's kind of like a paint marker or a gel marker, that would be really, really good. Um, you're going to need a permanent marker. You could do Sharpie, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, you're also going to need a ruler for some straight lines today and you're also going to need out of the kitchen um, a lid and you want it to be kind of a medium sized lid you don't want like a sour cream lid you want it to be a little bit bigger than that so thinking like you know cool whip lid would be really good um, so you need something like that um, you're going to need some glue um, any kind of glue will really work and you also are going to need some some kind of a pattern paper so you know, if mom maybe scrapbooks or somebody in your family that you know scrapbooks, you can maybe get some of their scraps left over. Or if you got a really cool present for your birthday or Christmas, you can always take that paper and you can use that as well. Um, and then the last and most odd thing that we're going to need today is going to be caulking. And this is the kind um, that is acrylic latex caulk. It is white. And so, um, and it's paintable because we will be painting over it today. So um, that's kind of the strangest thing that you need today. Everything else is fairly normal and pretty easy to gather. So um, get your stuff and let's get started. All right, on your paper, well, before I say that, let me say this. I was looking at an artist and we actually, in my class, we've been talking about pop art. And then I came across this particular artist that I'd never really covered with the class before. And we, since we just come off of pop art, we'd been talking about how, you know, pop art comes from the word popular. It's things that were popular at the time. And so the kids were really, when I showed them this picture, I was asking them, did, did they think it was pop art? And so we talked a lot about it. We talked about how in the picture there are definitely some things that would have been popular during the time. But then as we got to looking at it, we were seeing that the, that this actual piece was made in 1995. So were these cars real popular during 1995? To some people, probably, um, but not to you know the mass majority. Most everybody wasn't driving a car like this. Um, but we also talked about um, you know cherry pie. It's pretty popular. It's something that doesn't really you know necessarily go away. You've, we've had that for a long time, and it's popular. Um, everybody has a heart. We talked about the hearts too. We talked about popcorn. Of course, that's something that we all, you know, grab when we're watching a movie. Um, and then up in the far corner, they have like a little cityscape, and you see once again these kind of old-timey cars. So Frank Romero is our artist that we were looking at, and we we talked a lot about the picture. We talked about um, his use of color. He uses lots of blues and reds. We talked about his brush strokes. We talked about how he visibly wants us to see his brush strokes. So that's, it's not because he was lazy or because he was just tired and like, oh, get, get done with this. He wants you to, you know, live every brush stroke with him. So he shows you all of those brush strokes. And so we talked about that, but we also talked about that there's repetition within this, just like there is in pop art. And the repetition doesn't necessarily come with the images, but each piece of this, this shape is repeated over and over again. So you have repetition within these shapes. So the kids are really excited about it, and we kind of talked about doing something similar to this. And so we finally decided that we were going to take 
the concept of Frank Romero's mural, and this is a very large mural, and he is a muralist, that's what he does. He typically does really, really huge murals on the side of, you know, on the embankments on the highway and different things like that. Um, we decided to kind of take that idea of the repetition of the shape and then we also talked about kind of dividing it up since this one is divided up. So that's kind of our basis for our project. And so starting off, we're going to have your white piece of paper and you're going to need that um, lid. Whatever kind of lid you can get your hands on. And we're basically going to, we're going to be making a very large heart. So we need the lid. And you don't have to have the lid, but we just, it helped us all make it very symmetrical and make it very even. So um, using the lid to make the two top parts of our heart. So we started with, I told them that it needed to be really, really large and that I wanted them to have the heart almost come to the top of the page and almost go all the way down to the bottom. And you don't need to trace the whole lid because you're not making a circle. You're just using the top part for that, that arc that's going across there. And then, depending on what lid they got, some of the kids said, my lid's too big and it's overlapping it. So if that happens, if your lid is too big and it overlaps it, just go ahead and draw it and then you can always go back and erase what you don't need to be there. Um, and it also doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether or not it is centered on your paper because we will be cutting it out. So not super important that it's centered on the paper. Um, and so once you have got the two top, the two tump, the, the two top parts of the heart, you are going to, I told the kids, kind of try to find where your center point is down on the bottom. And that's where you want to head. And I also told them, you know, you don't necessarily want it to be like super, super straight. You want to give it a little bit of natural curve, give it a little bit of style. So we talked about kind of doing a real light line so that you can kind of watch and see where it's going a little bit easier and direct it over where you need it to go. And then if you need to kind of modify, either by bringing the line out a little bit or bringing it in a little bit, whichever, you can easily do that without a whole lot of heavy, extensive erasing. So, <clears throat> once you get that done, the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to be dividing your heart into four quadrants, all right? So, quadrant meaning four, so we're going to have four. So, I explained to the kids, you can divide it however you would like to. I showed them the method of dividing it where it just goes straight down the middle. It did not have to be symmetrical. You could have one quadrant could be larger than the other, so it was kind of up to you. And um, you could go straight across, you know, halving it this direction. Or if you wanted, you could make one mark here and then drop one down and one could be here. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one here. And then I think I'm going to do my other one. It's going to be up here. So I'm going to kind of stagger mine. We talked about that even though we were using the lid shape and our hearts were going to be very similar in size and similar in their shape, that we wanted to have a lot of variety because we don't want them all to look the same because that's not at all what art is about. So we wanted them to all have, you know, differences, some similarities, but we wanted lots of differences as well. All right, now, on your heart, you've got these quadrants here, and you are going to be doing a different technique in each quadrant. So in my class, we talked about that the quadrant on the left, we were going to be doing the caulking in. So that's going to go here. We talked about that the um, collage work was going to go here. We are doing a stripe pattern, which is using repetition here. And then over in this area, we're also going to be using some other repetition, and we're going to be using our initial. So you've got um, texture. You've also got some texture up here as well with your collaging. And then you've got lots of repetition down here in these two areas. 
Okay, so I would like for you to start with, because it's going to need to dry, I want you to start with the caulking and because it's also the most fun part. You heard it here. And the thing with the caulking is you can get several different kinds of this. Um, I get these because they're a little bit easier to use. Um, you just have to kind of really use your muscles and you're going to squeeze a bunch of this out onto your paper. And if you need to come back and get more, you can. And then you're going to take your finger and you're just going to start spreading this around. Stay off of there. All right, you're going to spread this all around. And you want to have enough of it that you've got some good texture. But, you know, you don't want it so heavy that it's going to like, you don't want this big glob left here. You want to smooth things out, but you want to have enough that you've got some good texture. So you'll see what that is when, after you get your finger into it. You'll kind of figure out what's a good amount to use and what isn't. And so just kind of take some from up top and spread it around because the first thing you need to do is just kind of get a good even coat of it on inside that whole quadrant. So you want to kind of spread it out. And if you've ever helped um, ice a cake or anything like that, we typically don't ice cakes with your fingers, but I know from icing cakes that sometimes your finger slips in the icing and you have to, you know, taste a little bit of it. It's just quality control. But um, you can feel it's that same kind of a texture. It has the same kind of texture as icing. It does not taste like icing. So don't try tasting it. All right, so I've just about got this all smooth so that it's, add, it's out to all of the edges. And now kind of is where your fun part comes in. Um, with this, you could leave it very, you know, just kind of how it is now. It's got some really good texture. It's got, you know, peaks and valleys and all kinds of things like that. But you can also take it a step further. You might want to come in and do, you know, some kind of a pattern, some kind of a line that maybe goes up the center. You could also do spirals are kind of cool to do as well. I kind of like doing these too. You can spend hours doing this, except it dries faster than that. So if you're going to do this, you better do it quick. Um, you can do, some of my kids did their initials in it. Um, they drew lines like they scraped their finger across to pull out some of it. So where you had, you know, places where there were positives and negatives. You can do that as well. Some of them, like I said, did their initials. Um, so that part is kind of up to you. As long as you've got that all covered and you have got your area um, textured, then you're good to go. So you can let that dry. And while that's drying, you can actually start working on the next part. I want us to go ahead and outline what we can outline. Keep your marker out of this mess up here. You want to let that dry, but you can go ahead and um, go ahead and do your outlining now and it'll kind of save you later. Um, I'm just going to kind of freehand this, but you you know that you are always welcome to grab that ruler and I'm going to turn this. I'm seeing a my sleeve in the caulking. That's not good. I already wore enough of it home when we were doing it at school. All right, so we're going to outline this. And once we have everything outlined, um, the next thing I would like for you to do is you're going to do the collaging. So for the collaging, when I got my paper, I just decided I would go ahead and tear up a bunch of pieces because it certainly goes a whole lot faster if you tear up the pieces ahead of time. Um, and as far as glue goes, um, you can use, you know, any of the glues that we've used really before work fine, Elmer's, whatever. Um, the one thing is, is if you're going to use something like this, whenever you put the glue out, you probably want to spread it around with your finger a little bit because you don't want it to be too lumpy bumpy. You want it to be pretty flat. Um, I typically do not ever use stick glue, but you're going to see it here today. So 
I'm gonna use some stick glue. I don't even have this at my class. I just had it at the house and I thought, oh, I'll grab that real quick. So it'll probably work really fast actually, so that'll be good. All right, so spread out some glue. Don't do glue on the whole entire thing because you can't go quite that fast. Um, and then you're going to start by putting your shapes down and you want to overlap your shapes. So that means that the first shape that you put down, when you come and put the second one down, it's going to lay over it just a little bit. And you want to keep in mind where your outline is here and you want to try to stay within those lines. So as you're laying down your paper, overlap it, but kind of try to keep your eyeballs on where, I'm going to turn this, um, where the edge of your paper is. Actually, this glue may not work good because it may dry faster than I can go. We'll have to see. You want your pieces to be, um, you know, not ginormous, but not itty bitty either. So kind of medium size, around nickel size, I would say. Nickel to quarter would probably be pretty good. And you just want to keep that layering going. I'm going to put some more glue. And, um, the other thing that you want to make sure is that um, your edges, we, we tore the paper. We didn't cut the paper and that we did that for a reason because we want that really nice texture. So when you've got those little edges that have the torn marks on them, they just look really, really nice on this project. So those are intentional. They are not accidental. And for whatever reason, I've always liked tearing paper, but some of my kids were just like, can't we cut it? No, you can't cut it. And they just were totally distraught that they couldn't cut it. But I will say that after we were, we looked back at the artwork and we were all kind of critiquing everybody's work, they were talking about how they liked, there were a couple kids that did not follow directions and they ended up cutting it. And we all talked about how we liked how it looked a lot better with the edges being torn. So you're going to fill up this area. Now the other thing that came up a lot in class was about um, do you have to do the same color? And certainly you don't. If you want to try to do a couple different colors you can. But the one thing that you do want to do is you, you know, kind of keep some consistency. So, you know, if you're going to do different colors, think about what your pattern's going to be. So you just don't want it to be, you know, willy-nilly crazy all over the place. You want to have a plan before you get started. So you're just going to keep filling in these shapes. And once you get that done, it looks a lot like kind of like scales on a fish in a way. So once you get done with that, this whole shape will be filled with the green. So I'm going to stop there even though I'm not finished, but just know that that whole shape's filled. All right. Okay. So next I want you to go down and you are going to be doing some kind of a pattern in this area and it can be any kind of a pattern you would like for it to be. Just remember, it can be a line pattern, it can be a shape pattern. I'm trying to do this without getting my ruler into my caulking. That wasn't perfectly straight, but that's okay. And um, whatever you decide to do, you know, make it interesting and make it fun. And you're going to fill in this area. You might even want to come in and do you know, shapes in some of the areas and leave some blank. Um, you're also going to want to outline these lines with the black marker. And then next we're going to talk about this. So I'm going to move this one over. I've got this one that I've got my, this is all dry. My caulking is all dry. Um, I've not done that though. And then this is ready to go. But I want to talk about this area right here. Um, you're going to be using this area and you're going to pick either your first initial of your first name or your first initial of your last name. We did not do middle names. That's totally up to you. 
Um, but you are going to do a variety of those letters. So if your last name starts with a A, you're going to do all different kinds of A's. Some might be cursive, some might be lowercase, some might be uppercase, some might be block letters, some might be bubble letters. You want all different kinds and all different, different varieties and they can be turned all different ways, but your main goal is to fill this entire space. So, um, you know, just jump in there and get started anywhere you want to. Some of the kids did they started out real super small and they made, you know, all these itty bitty little letters and then they kind of got tired and I said, start bigger. So when, you, when you're getting started, I would suggest kind of starting with maybe a big letter in the middle. It kind of breaks up the space and it's not so scary to think, oh my gosh, I've got all this to fill. And don't forget that you can turn some in different directions. I'm going to do a lowercase here and I'm going to come in here and do some other ones. And remember that you don't want them to all look the same, so kind of keep that in mind as well. So you could have different types of lines that go inside here to make your shapes, but you want to fill it. So as you go up, obviously your letters are going to have to get smaller to fit into those little small areas. So kind of keep that in mind. I've got a little bit of caulking here, so I'm just drawing on top of it. And I even, on mine, I even did some of my letters backwards. So you're going to keep filling that, and then you're going to outline this part, all right? So when you get finished with the outlining, the next thing that I want you to do is you're going to come in and in this area, as well as this area, you're going to be using the markers to color all of this in. So when you get finished, and I'm going to kind of show you what a couple of the ones that are finished. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you the most important part. Wait, wait, wait. We forgot about this part. This is the most fun part. How could I forget that part? All right, your acrylic paint. Pick whatever color you would like to pick, and that's going to go up um, on this upper left side. It doesn't take a whole lot of paint. You might think that it would, but it doesn't. Um, the one thing that you want to do when you're doing this is as you're painting it, it sticks in places, but where you've got real heavy texture, sometimes you really have to work your brush down into those areas to get all of those little white spots. And a lot of times, I think some of the ones in class that turned out the best were the ones that they actually did two coats. So it's kind of like, you know, when you're painting at your house, usually two coats at least. So this is one of those things, like even as I'm looking at it now, I can see through my paint. My paint's looking somewhat transparent, so I can see through it a little bit. And you don't want that. You want it to be a really nice, thick coating. So you're going to cover all this. And if you're going to do a second coat, you're going to want to need to, you're going to need to let the first coat dry first. So let that dry. If you've got little cracks and crevices, I've got a little one right here. And just kind of wiggle your brush, turn your paper, you know, turning your paper helps you to get a better angle sometimes. So just keep turning that until you get that in there. Let that dry, maybe do another coat. All right, now I'm going to put that to the side. I can't believe I almost forgot that part. Okay, so now these are a couple of my students. So you can see how we have got our collage in this area. We've got our, um, paints in this area. This particular one did um, lots of spirals in this area and then initials down here. And you can see how each, you know, each child depended, you know, they both took a different approach on how they wanted to add color to their initial area. But you can see like this one kind of did this rainbow pattern, whereas this one over here, they, lo they left a lot of negative space and white showing and um, they just kind of went around their letters looks really nice though. And I like to, um, you can see how well this is filled in. I like how 
I like the difference between how flat this one is, but this one, you've got some really good texture, and you can see lots of white in between, which just, you know, we wanted them all to be different. So your last kind of finishing steps that I wanted you to do were to, once you've got everything done, go back with your marker, because inevitably when you paint and do the marker, you go over the lines sometimes, and that's fine. Um, but go back with your marker because you really want to, you want this part to be really, really neat and concise. So in order to do that, you want to have really good craftsmanship, which means sometimes you have to go, you know, back over the lines that you've already drawn and, or darken them up and make them look really, really nice because it helps your piece to stand out. And also, once this is dry, which theirs is dry, mine's still wet, but you can also carry this marker line all the way up here around your edges and make it really nice and thick. You want it to show. And so once you have done that, your last step, your last step is going to be to get a large piece of black. And you don't have to necessarily do this step, but this is how I was thinking it would look best to finish off the project. And have your heart on here. Trace your heart. Don't let it move like I just did. Trace your heart. And we're going to actually, when we cut this, we're going to actually cut out away from the line that we just drew, but that kind of helps you to keep your bearings. You can use pattern scissors or you can just use regular scissors. I think I'm going to use regular, but I am going to give it my own pattern. I'm going to cut this extra off. And um, your last step is going to be that. So basically, here is my pencil line. I'm going to stay away from my pencil line because I want it to have this decorative edge that's going to show along the outside. So I'm just going to cut a wavy line that's going to go all the way around. And it's okay if you get to, to a part, like maybe up here at the top, where you can't quite make your the waves be quite as big as they were before. It's okay. This is one of those projects, you know, sometimes when you have those little differences, they really stand out and look really, really nice on your work. So your last step, once you get this trimmed, is you're going to glue your heart onto your black sheet of paper. And I would probably, instead of using my nifty glue stick, I would definitely go for some stronger kind of a glue because the way this is and how heavy it is, it's going to need something to help it, something strong. So give it a little bit of glue. You don't have to spread it out because it will stick just fine. And this goes down on here. Make sure you cover up your pencil lines and if it doesn't, erase them. Probably should have done that on the back. That would have been even better. And you've got your finished product in your chambers of hearts. Let's go to today's interesting facts about the heart. The average adult heart beats 100,000 times a day, 2.5 billion times during a lifetime. And every day, the heart creates enough energy to drive a truck 20 miles. And in a lifetime, that is equivalent to driving to the moon and back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I wanted to show you really quick, I showed you the other one after it was cut out, but this one really looks really, really nice up against the black and really shows off, so I can't wait to get this one cut out and glued on. And we are done for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and go out and make some amazing